Hey YouTubers, it's Chris here. And in the previous lesson, we went through a diagram illustrating how an iOS app can connect to a MySQL database through a PHP web service. So starting from this video, we're actually going to implement those things. The first step is to find somewhere where we can host our MySQL database and web service. So the way I chose to do it in this article was to sign up for web hosting, which gives you access to uh, upload files so we can upload our web service as well as create MySQL databases. Now I want to point out that obviously this option is going to cost money because you're signing up for web hosting, but there are tons of other options available. For instance, if you are a savvy web developer, you probably have set up a local uh, database server before on your machine or a web server and you can host your own files. Or maybe if you already have an existing MySQL database and you have access to upload files uh, to that server, you can use that as well. The reason I chose to do it this way is because it goes back to the days when I was learning how to build websites through HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and stuff like that. And I would need to sign up for web hosting to put up my websites publicly. From there, I explored MySQL and PHP, and that was a long time ago when I did any sort of web development like that. These days, I'm sure there are other options out there, but again, I haven't done any sort of web development in a long time, so if there are any web developers watching this, uh, feel free to comment in the comment section below, and maybe you can tell us what the best options are these days, or maybe some free options. Uh, to have access to a MySQL database and a place to upload some files. So in this article right here, uh, step one is to sign up for that web hosting. So I'm not going to go through that because I actually already did sign up for this web hosting when I wrote this article. Uh, so what I'm going to do is skip to step two and show you how to set up the database once you do have access to one. And obviously, uh, this setting up the database is going to be in the context of uh, the web host that I have. If you signed up for a web host as well, and it's not Bluehost, it may look a little different, but most web hosts these days have some sort of C panel or administrative panel where you can create new databases and also access an admin panel to manage the database. If you do want to sign up through Bluehost like I have, feel free to jump through the link in the description below to go to this article and just follow this section one, sign up for web hosting and database. And I've provided links to Bluehost there. At no extra cost to you, I'll earn a commission if you decide to sign up through the links that I've provided here for Bluehost. So if you do that, thank you for your support. And it's going to continue to help me provide free, high quality tutorials for you guys. Okay, so anyways, let's skip step one here. Let's jump straight to step two, setting up the database. Again, this is in the context of the C panel or control panel for Bluehost, but I'm sure you'll be able to find the options in your own web host. So this is what the C panel for Bluehost looks like. I'm gonna scroll all the way down here to database tools and click on my SQL databases. So this is going to list out all of the current databases I have. It's going to redirect me here. And it's also going to allow me to create new ones. So here I can give a new database a name. There's going to be a little prefix here for the database name. I've already created one here. I've called it sample DB. And the full name is iOS quiz one underscore sample DB. The reason uh, it says iOS quiz one is because that's the username that I signed up for uh, for my Bluehost account. And uh, the domain is iosquiz.com. So I was in the future, I was planning to create some sort of quiz uh, to aid in the learning for iOS programming. And so that's why I uh, registered that domain, iosquiz.com. Okay, so what I did here was I created a new database. I just typed in sample DB like that and I clicked on create database and that created this guy right here. The second step we need to do is to create a MySQL user because through that user, we query the database, we create new rows, we uh, delete rows and update and do all sorts of things like that. So we do that through a user. And in fact, the web service that we create will actually use this user account to perform all those operations. So what I did here, I've already created a user and I called him 
DB user. Again, there's this prefix here. So the full username would be iOS quiz one underscore DB user. Now you can put anything that you want. And I specified a password for it. And then I clicked on this button to create a new user. And the third step is finally to give access to that user to the sample DB. So you can see here that I can select the user. I can select the database and I can add that user to the database. So when you add a user to a database, it's going to ask you what sorts of permissions do you want to give this user towards accessing the database? So let me see if I can get back to that screen so that I can show you what that looks like. I think maybe if I click here. Yeah, so you're going to see a screen like this. And by default, all of it would be um, unchecked. Right? So you're going to have to check off the individual uh, privileges that it allows. Now, I'm not sure what the best practices are, but just my common sense tells me that I probably should not, if this were a production application, it should not just willy-nilly give this user all of the privileges. Because, for example, some of these are pretty dangerous. I think drop, right? This is for dropping a table. So this user would be able to delete complete tables, right? Um, this would allow them to create uh, my SQL procedures. I think that's what they were called in uh, SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, but here they might be called routines. It's been a while since I've worked with those. Uh, and here you'd be able to create tables and you'd be able to delete rows and stuff like that. So it really depends uh, what you're going to be doing with the web services. For example, if you only want to read data from the database to your iPhone app, then I would say you just need to select, right? But however, if your iOS app is going to be sending commands and sending data to uh, maybe insert rows or update rows, then you might need, you know, update and insert uh, wherever that is. There it is. So for me, in doing this demo, um, I didn't really want to bother with any of that, so I just enabled everything. But I want to make it clear to you that for demo purposes, it may be okay, but if you know, don't use this for production. So later on in this series, I'm going to take a deeper dive with familiarizing myself with what the best practices are for this sort of thing. And I will create some additional videos for these series so you know, as to show you guys what you should do. Um, but for this demo right now, just because I want to quickly get the iOS app um, reading data from the database, I don't want to have to worry about privileges. So I just enabled everything uh, when I added this user into this database. Okay, so be careful about that. Okay, so after you've done that, you've created a new database, you've created a new user, you've added the user to the database, and you've you know, enabled uh, the proper permissions for that user to access the database, you're good to go. Uh, we're going to go back now to the control panel. And we're going to scroll down all the way to database tools again. And I'm sure there's a couple of different uh, maybe administrative panels that you can use from here. But the one that I'm familiar with using is PHP MyAdmin. So I go ahead and I click that. It's going to bring me into sort of a control panel to manage that database. Okay, so this is what it looks like. On this left-hand side, I have the databases. You can see iOS quiz one underscore sample DB. If I click that, uh, it might be confusing if you've never worked with MySQL before. Now, this, it might be hard to tell, but this is a table. A database table in my database it's called locations and I didn't have this before so in order to create a new table I just typed in the name here so I typed in locations and I had four columns because I was planning to add uh, for the table um, for each row I needed a location name I needed a location address and then a lat and a long so the coordinates representing where that location is so that's why I chose four columns. So after you create your table, um, you can actually click into it and then you can add your columns. Uh, let me see if I can show you that under structure. Yeah, here, see I've added a bunch of these columns here. So 
I've added a name, address, latitude, longitude, and there's a data type associated with each column as well. Now I put varchar, and varchar is kind of like a variable character. It can be, you know, uh, letters or numbers or anything like that. And this 50 in brackets beside it represents the length of that field. So it, it's going to be up to 50 characters long. Um, so I put 50 for the name and the address, and I put 15 for the coordinates. So that's the structure of my locations database table. Now the next step that I did was I added data to it. So you can see here, you click browse to browse the data for the table. I only have two rows of data. Uh, one is Apple. So this is the Apple headquarters. The address is one infinite loop, Cupertino, California. I don't think they've moved yet, or maybe they have. So maybe this address wouldn't apply. But in any case, uh, this tutorial was done a while back. So this was their address, and this was the coordinates for it. And this is the Google headquarters so same thing and there's tons of websites out there where you can actually punch in an address and it's going to return to you what the coordinates for that address are so a simple Google query is going to turn up those websites for you you can type in something like get latitude or something like that for address and you're gonna see a ton of sites that's um, that will help you with that okay so that is it for creating the database and populating it with these two rows of data. Um, because I did this already, I'm sorry I couldn't show you actually step by step, but um, my, my tutorial here in step two, it has a ton of screenshots and it's going to show you step by step basically how to um, create that database, create that database user, then add that user to the database. And here you can see that I've enabled all of these privileges and then going into PHP my admin and creating the table and then creating the columns for it here and then inserting some data into it you can see here it's really step-by-step -step instructions there and we, you can see that we end up in the same place with these two rows of data now in the next step we are going to write the PHP web service to query the database and you're gonna see that in the next lesson so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time bye for now